Uh, let me tell you, if I come wake up tomorrow and they say the army has taken over in Nigeria, it will not be a surprise to me. Because we, we, we are the ones who are pondering ourselves into pillars. With a cry of a, uh, with a cry of a uh, Buaria, this one, come to Chagaban, oh, we, uh, no, it's a, we die. So even if the military made a come, make it come take over. Uh, we pass back to doing well. Number two, people don't even hold. I've been young people not there for Nigeria again. Every time I hold, old people there, they can't give us. Yes. Eh? Anyone die, they can't put. Young people not there, all these young boys were there for Nigeria, they're not, they're not fit rulers. But the people don't give up palliative to Nigerian families. We don't see them, we don't see. That's why they open, they open butter, butter. We don't see. Everything still costs. We don't see anything. See with the sofa. See, all my, I don't see them. All my, all my body. It's uh, economic challenges. The economy of Nigeria is very poor. So an average Nigeria finds it difficult to, to eat or even to eat a square meal in a day. Yes. So that is the major challenge. Because our economy, we have not been able to enhance it to help us to be productive. We have not encouraged indigenous companies, indigenous manufacturers to come in to, you know, fund them, the government fund them to bring in equipment to, uh, you know, uh, uh, make a production to be progressive. So that is the problem we have as a country. So speaking of enhancing our economy, how do you think the government can enhance our uh, number one is human capital development. There are a lot of people who don't have finances. They have the technical know-how. They have the skill to move the economy forward. But they don't have finances to finance such projects. So that is where the government have to come in. You understand? And in also in areas of agriculture. You understand? A lot of families find it difficult to feed. We left every production pertaining to agriculture to the northern, uh, to northern part of the country. So we have to encourage you know, everybody, even in your uh, local place, to have a, a mini farm so that we can you know, fight hunger uh, Yes, uh, to stand safe. So, so why do you think people are leaving Nigeria? That is what we are saying. It's hunger. There, you are a, a graduate, you don't have a good job, there is no good job, no paying job. You understand? Our youths are rushing around, our youths are engaging in drugs. Yes. Why? Because the economy is bad. Somebody who is above 30 or who has a family or children to cater for, and in a day you cannot have up to 1,000 or 2,000 to feed them. What do you do? You look for greener pasture. That is why our people are leaving the Nigeria in those because of the economic emancipation of the people, because of bad policies of the government. You see them, they give policies, they don't meet up with the policies. They don't have the use of the country at heart. They are there for their private interest. They are there for their family. So you see them, a lot of them, their families, they are outside the country, enjoying, going, studying in a better school. But here you don't see any good uh, educational system here. No medical, good uh, medical system here. So all this is a problem. And it boils out to the government of the day. When you have people who are not competent enough to occupy positions of power, you see a lot of things come to play. You see the madness in the society. Our youth, I don't know what will become of them in five years to come. Because a, a, a whole chunk of our youth are indulging in drugs, in cultism. So you see a lot of killing. Look at the DPO that was murdered the other day by a court group. Do you understand? And the government had to place a hundred million budget on a, the, the Mr. Somebody, two Baba or something. So you see insecurity. Where the, the government, the evidence of democracy is not going straight to the people, you see insecurity. People will begin to live lawlessly. So that is where we are. And you see what the tribunal did. In general, the tribunal has been able to murder democracy in Nigeria. Let me tell you, as a Nigeria, I don't have much faith in Nigeria again. And I don't know what will become of my children. Because the tribunal, the little hope we have, because they say the, 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 the judiciary is the hope of the common man, you see where we are. So we are living in hopelessness. 
We don't know where our men will come tomorrow. Our next men will come from. So this is the issue we have at hand. And if we don't begin to address this, actually, people, when we begin to live in nepotism, live in tribalism, you understand, we we'll live in religion, sentiment, and whatever you think of. Because as a people, if we don't want to belong and live as a people, we'll just go our separate way. Because if we keep on trying to manage Nigeria, that is where we we'll bring the monster. The people become monster because there is no way you are able to manage their life. Their life has no meaning. They graduate who their parents spend millions of naira. You know how it is to pay money for school fees of children now, and after graduation they don't have job. So it is painful. It is very very painful, and that is why you are seeing in every other African country you see revolution coming, the military taking over power. They are not doing it. It's not a coincidence. It's something that is a pre-plan. It has been dictated into them. They know if, when you want freedom, you don't just go and sleep. And that is what is coming. It will take over Africa. We have to begin to question our existence. The white man has come and, you know, civilized us, take everything, take our dignity as a people. But how do we restore it? Our good hands, our good brains are in America. They are in England. They don't come back here. When they spend that money and go to England to study, after graduation, they will employ them there. Use them, use their, what is left of them, and bring them back. At their own age, they will come back here. They cannot do anything. So if we begin to have a government that is functional, that has the will of the people at heart, you will see that our best brains will be brought back to the country. Our brain's brain in terms of technology, in terms of science, in terms of medicine, they will all come back. And you will begin to see our people will begin to prosper. So if the government at the center is nothing to write home about, there is no way. We are just dreaming. Look at the case of Nam the Kano. The same echo was a body that are very, very much fast to go and fight Niger. These are the same regional court of ECOWAS body that has been seated on the case of Nandekano for many years. And they have their this in headquarters in Abuja. So you see this body, that our regional body that we are part of and we are those sponsoring this body. You see that because of the corruption, the corruption has also eaten deep into this uh, uh, sectors and you see them they are not functioning if ECOWAS has is a truly a strong body that you know has the interest of Africans at heart they will not be there these queues are taking place so that is what where we are and uh, uh, let me tell you if I come wake up tomorrow and they say the army has taken over in Nigeria it will not be a surprise to me because we, we, we are the ones who are pondering ourselves into problem. Are you saying the case of Unam de Carlo incarceration is a government, uh, government, the federal government has hand in it, like the Supreme Court have discharged him? But yes, who government... is keeping him? The DSS. The DSS is under the executive. The CSS is, is not just is, is a department of state security. They are answerable to the executive. Do you understand me? So why are they keeping this man? If a court of competent jurisdiction has said, leave this man on bail, why are they still incarcerated? Why is he being incarcerated up to now? There's no justice. In there the... is no justice All entirely right. in the system. All right. Do you understand? Now, Tinibuna is not even talking about releasing him. You understand? Yes. He's busy trying, traveling all over the world just to, you know, bring a cheap, cheap sympathy. Mm. You know, cheap favor from all these countries. Yeah. And they are, let me tell you something. Yes, sir. We are in a worse scenario. Yes. And the worst is yet to come. Mm. That is all I have. All right. Thank you, my man. God bless. Crime, crime has really increased in Nigeria. I've seen ritual killings and. You know, Yahoo Yahoo have really increased due after the, the removal of voice subsidy. Uh, and some Nigerians are saying coup is the way out that they should. What's transpiring in J. Gabon and Burkina Faso, that that is just the way out of Nigeria. What do you suggest, sir? Really, really, crime is all over the world. 
There's no way there's it's exception. But the rate has increased in, uh, in Nigeria. It, it will go down. People are always, you see, the cause of the queue is bad governance. Mm. Bad governance is the cause of the queue. Yes. If people begin to get the right leaders, just like we are, Tunisia is just entering now. It's not up to. Well, it's almost it's over 100, 100 days. days. It's not up to four months. Yes. For all I know, he's going. To, he's coming. Let us give him a chance. Well, this crime, this crime, crime rate must surely reduce, because I believe he's going to fight it headlong. That's why he's appointing his, his cabinet. I'm confident of the cabinet. I'm so confident. The army confident chief, the yes, cabinet. yes, yes. I'm confident. Niwu Rubado, they are, they are going to do well. Definitely. So you're optimistic about Tinubu administration. You don't feel Tinubu is incompetent? No, come for me. How can you say he's incompetent? Somebody that who has ruled Lagos. I'm not a politician. Yes, sir. I'm not a politician. But I believe with Santistans, I believe he's going to do well. Given the given that the perspective that he will do that, he has not. He, he will do well. All right. Thank you so much. All right.